This video is brought to you by 3, bringing you 4G at no extra cost. Hey guys, welcome to BTEC. It's Basil here with the Sony Xperia M2 Aqua. The Xperia M2 Aqua is a variation on a theme, that theme being the original Sony Xperia M2. Announced earlier this year and released in the middle of the year, the M2 is a pretty interesting device because it packs Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 processor, quad core power, one gig of RAM and a 4.8 inch display and brings all that to a lower price point than Sony has tended to bring those kind of features and indeed this OmniBalance design before. What does does the Sony Xperia M2 Aqua add to all that? Waterproofing. You can see the micro USB connector on the left hand side is underneath a flap. It also ditches the glossy back in favor of a matte plastic back which attracts fingerprints significantly less than its glass counterpart. Still, the M2 Aqua manages to feel relatively premium thanks to the OmniBalance design, looking much, much more similar to its flagships than most mid-range Sony phones have historically. As far as specs go, like we said, a 4.8 inch display, front-facing camera, you've got on-screen buttons. We'll talk about the user interface in a moment. On the right-hand side, you can see a micro SD card slot underneath a flap along with a micro SIM slot. This thing is 4G capable, by the way, as was the M2. You've also got a power button and a volume rocker and a two-stage camera button which is actually pretty nice and easy to press despite the fact it is so thin. At the base you've got a grill underneath which we'd imagine sits the speakers. On the left hand side you can see a micro USB port underneath a flap again for waterproofing and up at the top is a headphone jack again underneath a flap in order to ensure that is all nicely waterproofed. On the flip side, eight megapixel rear facing camera, flash, and what looks like a microphone, but we may be mistaken. If we take you through the user interface, you can see Android 4.4.2, there you go. And you've also got Sony's user interface over the top. You can see we've installed a custom theme over it. So if we tap through on themes, we've got the tri-flat theme. That's something that's really nice about Sony's interface. You can apply a theme very quickly and change and overhaul the whole look and feel of their phones. Having said that, what you can also expect is a fundamentally Android experience through and through. You've got the home screen, you've got applications that you can fill the home screen with. You can organize these applications very easily. Up the top, you've got a notification bar if you pull down with one finger, pull down with two fingers, you've got all your quick toggle settings as well. If we jump out of that, we can also see that the eight megapixel camera packs Sony's standard user interface that we've come to expect from Sony. So if we tap through on that, we can see all the shooting modes that are available right there, including AR effect and picture effect, as well as time shift burst. Now it's time to talk about the internals. Snapdragon 400 processor with one gig of RAM. We actually gave it a quick benchmark and we saw that Antutu benchmarks it around the same as the Samsung Galaxy S3, which isn't too bad at all. Should be able to play most 2D games, should be able to play most 3D games as well, if not all of them. And yeah, generally it's a decent phone for 13 pounds a month. One thing left to do and that's dunk test time. So making sure all the ports are nicely covered, all the flaps are tightly sealed, it's time to switch it on, get that screen activated and dunk.